Good day, and welcome to another exciting class on structures that span spaces. Ever wondered how bridges hold up cars, or how buildings stay standing tall? It all comes down to understanding structural members and how they avoid failure. Knowing about these things helps us appreciate the amazing work of engineers. They use their knowledge of different types of members, like beams and arches, to build strong and safe structures. Building a structure is like creating a giant puzzle. Each member plays a specific role, just like each puzzle piece fits together. Engineers need to choose the right materials that are strong and flexible enough to handle the weight and forces they'll face, like wind and rain. There are many different types of structures that span a space, and these include Beams Alternative bridge supports Arches and Cantilevers Today, we will discuss these in more detail. Structures that span over space are structures that cover a large area without intermediate supports. The space between two supports is called a span, for example, the space between the two banks of a river. The structure that is commonly used to span over a space is a bridge. Structures that span a space also include roofs and stadiums. These structures are designed to bridge a gap and support weight over a distance. Bridges must be able to carry their own weight and the weight of the vehicles that travel over them. Beams are horizontal members that resist bending. They carry weight by transferring the load to supports at either end. They support the load from above and also span over space. Beams can be made of steel or concrete. There are three types of beams and these include Steel eye beams, or girders Concrete lintels and the beam and column bridge An eye beam is a specialized beam shaped to look like a capital letter I. It does not bend easily. An I-beam is the main horizontal beam of a structure and often supports other smaller beams. These have a strong, I-shaped cross-section, making them efficient at resisting bending. The letter I provides strength and support making beams reliable and they can be used as girders. A girder is a beam used in construction to support other loads. A girder forms the main horizontal beam in a structure. It supports the structure and all other smaller beams connected to it. Beams can be box or Z-shaped. They are commonly used in bridges and buildings, and they efficiently distribute loads along their length. A lintel is a horizontal beam that provides support. It is used above the gap of a window or a door. Lintels take the weight of the wall above the gap and transfer that weight to the wall on each side of the gap. Concrete lintels are made of concrete and used above windows and doors to support the wall above. Lintels bear weight and can withstand compression forces. A column is a vertical member of a frame that carries a load downwards. A beam and column bridge consist of a series of columns on the ground with a beam spanning the space between them. This is a simple bridge design where vertical columns support horizontal beams. The beams carry the weight of the bridge and traffic across the gap. The beam and column bridge is common in various bridge designs over roads and rivers, providing stability and load-bearing capacity. Beam and column bridges, although they span a distance, they cannot span a distance over deep water, a deep valley or when the distance is too large. Alternative bridge supports are therefore necessary. Bridges whose support depends on other members and not columns would be better suited to span large distances. Bridges that are able to do this include suspension bridges or cable-stayed bridges. A suspension bridge is a bridge supported from above by cables that are connected to other cables that hang between two towers. In a suspension bridge, cables are suspended between tall towers, which support the weight of the bridge deck hanging below. The bridge deck hangs from cables that run the length of the bridge. The towers from either end of the bridge hold the main cables and lighter vertical cables reach down from the main cables to the bridge deck. The cables experience tension, a pulling force, to hold the bridge up. 
Cables used in suspension bridges are lighter than beams or arches allowing the bridge to span large distances. The supporting towers or pillars must be very strong and have firm foundations. The Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, USA is an example of a suspension bridge. Suspension bridges are simple, easy to build, cheap and use materials efficiently. Suspension bridges are built for vehicle and pedestrian traffic. An adaptation of a suspension bridge is a cable-stayed bridge. A cable-stayed bridge differs from a suspension bridge in the way cables are connected to give support. The cables that support a suspension bridge are connected to a pair of suspended cables. However, in cable-stayed bridges, each cable is connected directly to the nearest tower. A cable-stayed bridge is a bridge supported from above by cables that are connected to the nearest tower. The supporting cables stretch from the bridge deck to the nearest tower. Towers support the beam or deck of the bridge, and they bear the load of the bridge. Cable stayed, however span a shorter distance than a suspension bridge. A prominent example of a cable stayed bridge is the Nelson Mandela Bridge. An arch is a curved structure that can support a lot of weight. Arches can withstand compression forces. An arch supports a horizontal structure, and its shape helps to transfer the force of its weight and any weight pressing down on top of it, down its side supports to its base. Arched structures can span greater distances than beams. The arch spreads the force over a larger area. They can be made of stone, brick, concrete, steel or other materials. Arches are commonly seen in historical architecture and modern constructions. Arches can be used in bridges, buildings, and dam walls. The use of arches in buildings started in the ancient times. In ancient times, the available building materials would break very easily under tension forces. People commonly used arches in buildings to prevent this from happening. Arches were built of stone. The compression forces between the stones in an arch push the stones together more tightly. In this way, compression forces lock the stones in the arch. Arches can create large open spaces without needing columns in the middle, allowing for architectural freedom. The Romans designed arch bridges and used them until the Industrial Revolution. This kind of bridge could be built simply with shaped blocks of stone and without complicated joints. There are different types of arch bridges. Before people started using iron and steel to build bridges, arch bridges were built with stone. In ancient times, arch bridges could support heavier loads than horizontal beam bridges. Arch bridges transfer the weight of the deck down through the curved arch to the ground at its ends. Arches allow column and beam bridges to span greater distances. Column and beam bridges have added support that the arch provides. Columns can be placed further apart as the arch supports the weight of the traffic on the bridge. Arches are also used in dam walls. The arch shape of a dam wall curves upstream. In other words, the wall curves into the dam. The force of the water pressing against the arch will strengthen the structure. The compression force is pushed to the sides of the wall and its foundations. The arch shape supports the dam structure and withstands the stress as well. Dams use arches to resist the outward pressure of water. Dam walls are usually built in narrow, steep-sided valleys. Cantilevers are beams that are supported only at one end and extend horizontally beyond the support. Cantilevers rely on support at the fixed end to resist bending caused by weight acting on the free end. A swimming pool diving board is attached to a support on one side only. This is a good example of a cantilever. Cantilevers can be made of steel, concrete, wood, or other materials. Cantilevers can be used for balconies, roofs, bridges, and cranes. Cantilevers have a high stiffness. There are two types of cantilevers, simple and cable-stayed. A simple cantilever is a horizontal beam supported at one end that spans a space. It is attached at one end only. 
As a load is applied to the cantilever, it starts to bend. A balcony, diving board. A roof, verandas in houses are simple cantilevers. A cable-stayed cantilever combines cantilever design with cables for additional support. The cantilever is supported by cable stays. This allows a bridge to span a greater distance. The bridge is held in position by cables that are connected to a high tower on one side of the bridge. Some modern bridges use a combination of a cantilever design with cable-stayed support for the extended portion. Cable-stayed cantilevers are popular in bridge construction, offering a sleek and modern visual. We have come to the end of our class today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section. If you have a specific topic that you want us to cover, let us know. And please subscribe so that we continue offering these classes. Until next time, keep well.